This is the business part of the business lunch. Um, so thank you all for being here. Um, as a recognized nonprofit organization in the United States, we are actually required by law to host an, uh, a general assembly um, every year to make sure that we can conduct the business of our organization. And so this is why I am talking to you through your lunch. Um, we bribe you with food so that we can actually get a quorum to do the business that we need to do. So hopefully you found the bribe to be worth it. The first order of business is to approve the minutes from last year's business meeting. Um, they were distributed by email, and I know you all read them diligently. So I will ask if there were any corrections that need to be made to the minutes from the 2022 business meeting. Seeing none, I'm going to um, ask <clears throat> if the minutes are approved. Do, I have, do we have to do an applause sort of thing, Linda? All right, I need, the, no, 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 wait. Um, I need there to be a motion to approve the minutes. Oh, wait a minute, Sam, Sam moved. Can I have a second? All right, all right. Sonia got the second. Sorry, Barbara, I know you're right in front of me. Um, all right, all those in favor of approving the minutes from the business meeting, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we have an abstention. Why not? Um, then the minutes are approved. Now, wait, I have to do a clicker thing. Approval of the 22 minutes, yay! Now I want to spend a, a little bit of time introducing folks. Um, for those of you who have not been paying attention, um, I am the outgoing president of IASIST, and at the end of this luncheon, that will no longer be my role. I will move into the role of past president. So I'd like to start by um, introducing the president-elect who will take over from me in about an hour. Please, Robin Rice is the newly elected president. Our newly elected vice president is Bob Ray Bordelon. Our re-elected secretary is Linda Kellum. Our ongoing treasurer is Jen Doty. And vacating his role as immediate past president as Tomas Adetera. So, you get to hear my last president's report. Yep, what? Sorry? Oh, the rest! Oh. Heaven forbid, I forgot about the rest of the amazing people that serve on the administrative committee. Um, can everyone who is on the AC please stand and be recognized? These are the people that gave up their Memorial Day to sit in a windowless room and talk about um, annoying but necessary things to help keep the organization running. So thank you very much, and thank you, Linda, for keeping me honest. Um, now, I'll do, now that I get to do my president's report, my last one. The first thing that I want to do as uh, president of the organization is to make sure that I do recognize the importance of our sponsors this year. Um, this has been a very interesting year putting together this conference in a way that we haven't done in the past. And these are the organizations that stepped up and helped us significantly financially to be able to help make this happen. So please, please, please give a round of applause for our sponsors. All right, so what does the president have to say about, I don't know, anything? Um, we, we had a lot of stuff going on, even as we crawl out of the sort of pandemic era. Um, I, again, have introduced you to make sure that we have a new executive committee after today. Our admin committee is the broader group of representation from different regions and different positions that helps to run the organization. The executive committee is the subset of that leadership that actually has more meetings 
than the regular AC. Um, and so we want to make sure that I want to make sure that I point that out um, how important those roles are. Um, so that's the people place piece. Place, we're in Philly. We made it. We got here. Um, at the end of the conference last year in Gothenburg, for those of you who were not there, we didn't know where we were going to be this year. And it was a, a set of people who worked tirelessly to make this happen. For the first time, at least in my membership, in my memory, which is 20 plus years, um, we have done this conference without the support of a single host institution. And so that meant that there was an awful lot of work that had to be done by the membership and by um, wonderful folks that we have hired to help us look like professionals. We even, they even gave me a fire yesterday. That was so awesome. Um, we took some chances. We made some mistakes. Um, we've learned an awful lot. And so now we'll be able to think about how to move forward and plan for next year's conference more effectively. Um, so, and we're still marching along. There's still things that are happening. Um, we have officially formalized our relationship with our Africa chapter. I think that last year I was telling you that we still had paperwork in the process. Everything is signed, sealed, and delivered. And the growth in the Africa, uh, activity in the Africa region is incredible. And we even have a few folks who were able to get visas and join us here. So if you are attending from the African region, can you please stand up so we can give you a round of applause? Excellent. Thanks very much. All right. But there's still more to do. And I don't want to give my, um, <clears throat> my successor a, a list of things, but, uh, but this, is the, this is where I see the potential for a lot of um, work that still needs to be done. We have open positions that need to be filled. We are looking for a new archivist. We are looking for a social media coordinator. Um, we have IQ editorial board openings. Um, and there's many, many more ways that you can be involved and get to know I Assist better and help some of these fantastic people to, to continue to advance the work of the organization. So we actually have a birds of a feather session planned for after lunch for those of you who um, are, might be interested in learning what does that actually look like. Um, we have some strategic planning that we need to do. It's been a long time since we had a strategic plan. That was the number one thing I wanted to do when I took over as president in 2019. And then 2020 didn't happen. Um, so COVID sidelined an awful lot of the longer term work that, uh, that still needs to be done. We have more conferences to plan. We're, doing a, we're working very hard to get into a longer planning horizon so that we can say in advance where we expect conferences to be a couple of years out so that people can plan appropriately. Um, and we need to continue to communicate and collaborate. Um, I want to make sure to remind everybody that once you leave here, it's not just the conference, it's not just the listserv. Um, we have so much that we are being asked to do um, the data world keeps growing, and most of our budgets don't keep up. Um, and so I want everybody to make sure that they're, they know the value of participating in iAssist and being part of this community, and continue to take that with you as we work through the next year. So, any questions before you stop hearing me for a little while? Well, yes, wait. We have to get you a mic. Who in this room are current fellows? That's coming up. We have a fellows report. <laughs> right, Florio? You are going to talk about that, yes. Paul is so excited. Any other questions that I can answer? All right, in that case, I'm going to turn it over to our treasurer. Mm -hmm. 
Hello, I'm Jen Doty. I have the pleasure of serving as ISS treasurer. Uh, I think I pressed this button to advance. That didn't work. The green one, I'm pressing a green one. It's that green one. Uh, so what does a treasurer do when she finds herself in Philadelphia? <laughs> <laughs> she goes to see where the money is made, of course, uh, and also uh, admire some historic sites that have a treasurer affiliation or not. So if you haven't been out and about in Philly, please go see it. All right, now to get serious. Uh, first, I uh, want to talk about our, our finances from um, our last complete fiscal year um, in 2022. Um, you will notice that while these charts are roughly the same size, our expenses did in fact exceed our income. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, this type of report um, that we've given before, you'll notice that generally our income comes primarily from our fabulous membership, um, paying their dues, thank you very much. And um, if our conference happens to actually bring in income, which uh, we are thankful that Gothenburg did. Um, so we had some income from that. And then we also had sponsorships for this conference already coming in in the last fiscal year. So once again, I'll echo San, I had the pleasure of accepting the money from the sponsors and we really, I think, ended up exceeding um, the original goal of the planning committee. So we are eternally grateful to those folks for helping uh, make this conference happen. Um, our expenses, I'm gonna get into more specifics um, since you'll see a huge chunk of that donut, love a donut chart, uh, is uh, what we've been calling our sort of mission flexible um, expenses, so things that we have identified as an association um, as being important to us. And um, so I still haven't decided if I like hierarchical charts, um, but I do sort of like the fact that this hopefully gives you some sense of where we really have been putting um, uh, money towards things that we consider to be um, particularly valuable to us. And so um, a big chunk went towards making sure we could have this kind of conference all together in person again by planning for and expending on the conference management services that we have um, and making a deposit on this venue. Um, but then I want to make sure I highlight um, these other large areas where we made expenditures. Um, we had a scholarship pilot that was a new thing for us um, in 2022 that was identified as a priority to put um, you know, cash that we had on hand. I just noticed there's a screen in front of me. I keep turning away from y'all. Um, so uh, I'm gonna adjust the mic a bit too. Um, the scholarship pilot, uh, the further breakdown of that, just over 11,000 is that um, uh, a good chunk of it, over 8,000 actually went to ALA um, to support their diversity scholars program. Um, and then the other roughly $2,500, $2,600 went to um, ICPSR for um, their diversity scholarship program as well. So supporting these initiatives that help diversify our profession. Um, and then our longstanding fellows program that Florio is going to talk more about um, that we've had the pleasure of uh, continuing to fund. Um, and then the Africa chapter, as Sam um, alluded to, uh, you know, making sure we continue to support the growth of um, this uh, region of our membership. So, um, and then we have uh, annual regular um, uh, expenses such as infrastructure, admin, et cetera. All right, 2023. Uh, yeah, that number is right. Um, so our income, um, as we were budgeting, looking at historical and what we were anticipating, um, we were expecting to bring in roughly 25,000 this year, um, assuming our members continue to sign up, um, renew, and then um, hoping optimistically for some conference income. Um, however, we were, um, thinking ahead in forming the budget that we were going to need to anticipate that the conference could end up costing quite a bit, um, which it has. So again, this is budgeted. So um, we are still in the middle of our fiscal year. Um, we run on a January to December 
um, fiscal year, with the calendar year. Um, the conference is a huge, huge part of our budget. Um, and so a conference loss of 50000 that we budgeted for in the event of um, a possible um, catastrophic cancellation um, it has turned out to be wise that we budgeted for a potential loss. Um, so again, the conference management services and insurance and paying for this venue, um, big chunk of change. Um, and fortunately, our budget is um, able to withstand the fact that um, the conference, uh, in reality, um, is overall a financial loss for us. But I would like to emphasize the value that it brings to us in, in other ways. Um, I cannot say enough how happy I am to be in this place with all of you. Um, so when we've continued then to be able to still fund um, those mission um, related expenses that are flexible, but that we feel are essential to our values um, in supporting the fellows um, to be able to attend um, who may not have been able to otherwise, um, continuing to support our Africa chapter, which is a dynamic and growing um, space that holds events and really brings people together in that region. All right, and then uh, I will go ahead. Um, and so to give you the big picture of what this has meant though, um, over the last five years, this is how our, um, our income and our expenses have usually um, laid out, and so you can see that our budgeted uh, 2023 expenses, which we expect to be pretty much in line with what we had totally budgeted for, is far exceeding um, the income that we've brought in, at least in the last five years. Um, I'll note because, yeah, it may be of interest to folks, um, the reason that uh, 2020 still actually brought in money despite not having any conference at all again was member dues and then 2021 was the year of our entirely virtual conference which um, fortunately was also actually um, brought in a significant amount of income both in members who signed up to attend um, get a discounted rate to attend um, the virtual conference and then the fact that an entirely virtual conference um, is a very different beast when it comes to what it actually costs. Um, any questions before I move on to the final chart which I'm trying to end on an optimistic note. So our balance is over time. We have been extremely fortunate that we've had very healthy bank balances. Um, and so um, as you know, significant as the expense of this conference has been, we could take it with the, the balances that we had. But you will notice the green bar there at the bottom of the chart, which is our US account balances in which all, nearly all the expenses have come out of so far has shrunk significantly. Um, and we're even having to transfer some money from the UK and Canada. Um, but, you know, the Canadian account is quite healthy. And so, you know, that's encouraging. Thank you, Canadians. I almost said A at the end of that, and then I didn't. And then I had to point out that I didn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, any questions? I promise I won't do that again. Ashley, are we doing the microphone? Yeah. That's okay. Is our UK account denominated in pounds? Say that again. The is UK it? account, is that pounds? Oh, um, yes. Okay. So, oh, I thought I was pressing the right button to go backwards, but no, nope, I'm not. Oh, somebody went backwards for me, thank you. Um, yes, so I neglected to point out, um, so these are totals um, in US dollars because um, they're converted. But yes, uh, the reason that we actually have separate accounts um, is because they are in the currency of the country that, yeah. Um, good question, thank you for pointing that out. Hi, Sam. Um, Asia Pacific representative, I think, is that what yes. Linda said? Um, can you go back 
two slides just to the five-year comparison. Whoever kindly went back for me before, okay. thank you. This one? Yeah, sorry, I just wanted to explore that 25,000, and apologies if this is kind of off the cuff. That's only about 50 attendees, right? That is membership, the, um, the 25,000 budgeted yeah. that we expected in. Um, it was a um, conservative estimate of membership fees for the year being roughly 15,000 and then a very optimistic, based on previous years, um, possible 10,000 income from the conference. So we were expecting that most of the um, money brought in by the conference would be paying for the conference, for the venue deposit we already had to put down and the conference management services and all the lovely food and yeah. Okay. Does cool. that make sense? Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I see a hand back there, Sam. Oh. Thank you. I have a question about the difference in costs uh, between hosting a, or having a conference without a host versus having one with a host, um, um, and whether that had an impact. You want me to take that one? Y if you don't mind, Madam I President. I don't mind. Um, one of the things that has always been part of the host institution's role are a lot of the support infrastructure. Um, and so usually what happens, sorry for people behind me, um, usually what happens is the host institution is a university or some other organization like that that can provide space. So we don't have space costs. There's usually a conference management type of activities that are associated with a campus. So those costs tend to be lower. And then there's a whole bunch of volunteer stuff that happens behind the scenes that we never, we didn't know anything about until we started this. Um, and so this is the first year where a lot of the, what I would call below the line costs were explicitly above the line. And so that's where, that's really what the big difference is. Um, we made assumptions, I told you we, we made some mistakes. Um, we made some assumptions about how this conference would work and what the expenses and the income would look like and they turned out to not be realistic. I'm an economist and we can assume like nobody's business, but if you know economists, you know that we're rarely right. Thanks. Oh, wait, uh, wait. I will say my name, Linda. My name is Mandy, not Linda. Linda told me to say my name. I am Mandy. Let me stand. That way people can hear me, see me. Hello. Um, so given the mistakes made, what do you do? What are potential strategies that you're thinking going forward to, to deal with the, the costs? Whomever. <laughs> or if you do not wish to talk about that right now, just say that's fine. <laughs> so I, I will say we are going to have a, a debrief with some of the lessons learned. We do have another conference in the works. For, I'm going to, for those of you who don't know yet, you have to come Friday to hear about it. Um, but understanding a little bit more about where some of these cost pressures are, we've actually done a lot more homework this year to see what kind of cost estimates we would have for next year that in a way that we didn't realize we would need to for this year, right? And so there was a lot of places where we just took swags um, and those turned out to be oh, nowhere near what we, where we needed to be. And so for planning for next year, we've already gotten some estimates we're having discussions about what does the program look like. Um, is hybrid realistic, um, given the, the, the costs and, and all of the, and, and to be honest, all of the volunteer power that is still required and the quality of the experience. I know that we've had some challenges with sp speakers not being able to be heard and Zoom issues and whatnot, and again, we're trying to be as inclusive as possible, um, but that's gonna be one of the big things that we look at for next year is 
we may not be able to do uh, a, synch an, a synchronous hybrid session. There, there's probably something else we're going to have to do. I oh, see, you guys really didn't want to hear me talk, right? You really want to hear Jen talk. My name is Ron. <laughs> Hi, Ron. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to express my appreciation for all the efforts you, Jen, and all the you know leadership did because this is my first conference for ISIS since 2019, and uh, I could really tell that it's worth the effort in trying to figure out a way to maintain that because you know my brain is so zoomed out that. Uh, you know, if we had continued to do Zoom, I'd probably go to maybe 50 minutes and then leave. So it, it's worth trying to figure out how to make this work. I understand the world's changed, but it's worth it. Uh, on, on behalf of the Program and Local Arrangements Committee, I just want to say thank you for that. <laughs> yes, you, I, I'll, I'll write you a check later. <laughs> oh, no, but it won't be an ISIS check because we don't have any money. Now, I didn't bring my checkbook to this conference on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, this is Bob Downs, and I'd like to say that, yeah, this is great, and we really appreciate the efforts of the organizing committee and all the volunteers. One thing, though, that I've seen with other organizations is uh, seeing the increasing inflation that's been taking place in terms of the cost of these events, and uh, with the Zoom as well going hybrid, uh, they've had to adjust their fee structures uh, for uh, the hybrid participants versus the uh, online participants because uh, the hybrid, uh, making the online capabilities does uh, run into a lot more costs than one would think. Yeah, thank you for that, Bob. Um, I think that that's definitely been one of the explicit lessons learned. Um, and hopefully something that we can make visible um, so folks appreciate the true costs. Um, you know, there, I think, were some understandable assumptions made, you know, like, well, you just throw up Zoom, right? You know, and then you've got a virtual option. But um, we have these lovely folks in the back of the room who are making all this work pretty seamlessly, you know, in a way that wouldn't be possible without paying for. And I think... To bring it actually back around to our conference theme, this becomes a matter of, you know, the true uh, cost of labor. And so it is a social justice um, initiative that we should be embracing as an association, that we don't have our conference on the backs of other people. I got applause, so thank you very much. <laughs> I will step down. All right. Thank you. And now it's um, our membership chair, Amanda. Hello. My report is going to be a little more boring. So, um, numbers. Our numbers are fairly flat. Um, we hold consistently right around in the low 400s. This has not changed. Um, and this is also going to be fast, because I don't have a lot to say about this. <laughs> I'm excited that we're flat. That's good. We're not dipping around. Um, but we could go up. That would be nice. This is my map. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Arc Online. Help me out. Um, what excites me about this map, though, and the reason I went to the trouble of making it, and it was a bit of trouble, I will admit, because, um, well, anyway, we don't standardize. We, we, there's about six ways you can express United States, and you all <laughs> expressed United States in all those ways, so I had to do a little data clean. Um, I like that it's global. This is really global, and that's one of the things I really like about ISIS, is that we are a global organization. There are members from every continent. It's kind of fabulous, I think. So there we go. 
And we come from all different sectors, uh, although we're mostly academics. Um, it would be, I think, interesting to try and grow the corporate. So if you have corporate friends, bring them in. That's gonna be a theme. Tell your friends. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> this slide did not come out right. Sorry about that. Um, something was lost on the copy paste. But, um, so organizational sponsorships. We sponsor other events. Um, we don't spend, we spent uh, last year $5,000 on this. So it's not an astronomical amount, but I feel like our money made a big impact. Um, all of our sponsorships in the last uh, 22, 23 cycle were for places that were not in the US, uh, Canada or Europe. They were in other places. And I think that is also fabulous. Um, that is, I believe, the first time that's ever happened. Um, and so all of these were happening in places that were not uh, Europe or North America. And I would like to give a big shout out to the ISS members who helped me review these sponsorship applications. I did not just pick them. <laughs> in fact, I did not even review them. I let that be independent. Um, so those folks are listed there um, and big appreciation to them. And the usual call, hey, um, this is a slide that I haven't changed. <laughs> uh, so it's been around for a while, but it stands. I mean, we always need help. And also in this particular environment, I would say if you could hype ISS a little bit, you know, tell your friends about it. Um, get people to come to a conference. Share the word that it's a good organization and worth joining. Oh, and also there's a birds of the feather. Um, I think you mentioned it though. Um, so if you're interested in doing things, show up to that. All right. Uh oh. <laughs> this is Sam. <laughs> These are all the questions that I didn't get a chance to ask yesterday because I was actually late for the meeting. Um, just on a note around membership numbers, do you want me to yell louder into no, the mic? No, no, I'm just there's <clears throat> echoey. I'm sorry. Um, regarding membership numbers, have we considered like as a way to continue growth of the organisation group discounts for larger groups? Because I think there's a lot of people here who have brought multiple people from their organization as a way to promote that would we be interested in you know bring a friend for half price hmm. that is an interesting idea all things i think it's something that ac could discuss yeah we're all we're always interested in hearing ideas from members i mean absolutely Just to remind everyone that over the last uh, member, mem membership year, we did make a change for a reduced rate across more categories. Um, so low, middle, and um, even, I think, upper, uh, middle, upper countries, according to uh, World Bank, are included in the reduced rate, as are students and retirees, which is something that's been asked for for a while. So. Um, you know, r right away you can you can bring a friend if they fit at a at fifty percent rate if they fall in that category. So the conference was fifty percent as well as the membership. What names? You have to say your name, or Linda will yell at me. Hi, I'm Linny from University of North Carolina Wilmington. Um, and I'm a first-time ISS conference goer. So my question is related to first-time conference goers. Um, with the stagnant membership, um, is there like about stagnant, stagnant amount of first-time conference goers as well? That, quite frankly, is not data we collect. Oh, and okay. that is gonna be hopefully a discussion coming up. Um, because I would like us to be uh, more expansive and deliberate and actually do a good survey of membership, um, which we haven't done. 
um, and also have a discussion about what information we archive from conferences and use in, in a longitudinal fashion. Um, so, stay tuned. <laughs> So the word nerd in me wants to point out that we like to consider our membership to be steady, <laughs> not stagnant, just saying. Um, but in my, when I said that there is some strategic planning that needs to happen, the, these are all excellent questions that we are hoping to be able to address. And so at some point in the not too distant future, you will see a call for people who want to participate in a strategic planning exercise. Because as much as you might love your administrative committee, we definitely make need to make sure that ideas from the general membership are always included. So, anything else? Cool. Hi everyone, of course, I'm too short for this podium as always. <clears throat> so I'm Sarah Young, I'm co-chair of the Professional Development Committee, um, and so providing this report on behalf of, of the committee. Um, so the Professional Development Committee, if you don't know, is here as part of the organization to support um, learning and professional development of our membership. And so over the past year, um, we organized three webinars that were quite successful in terms of um, attendance and then viewership on YouTube. Um, we co-organized a great um, webinar with the Anti-Racist Resources Interest Group um, that had 142 um, attendees, as well as a couple of other really um, nice um, uh, webinars, as you can see on the slide here. Um, our YouTube channel is getting some good traffic with um, subscribers um, considerably up from last year. Um, as well as a lot of views of the content um, that we post from our, our webinars. Um, we also had an initiative that was led by two of our um, committee members, uh, Wei Yin and Bo Soon um, Obi Lie, who are putting an initiative together to gather um, information, resources, volunteers, um, to sort of provide some sort of networking and uh, resource uh, resources around open data initiatives globally. Um, so this uh, was a survey that went out on the listserv. You may have seen we got a few responses, um, but hopefully you'll hear a bit more about this um, effort over the coming months as we sort of ramp up um, this project. Um, and we also um, are working with the fellowship committee um, to welcome our fellows, and you'll hear from Florio in a moment about our, our wonderful fellows this year. Um, and certainly welcome your ideas for not just um, speakers for our webinar series, but also other ideas for the ways that our committee um, can support um, your learning and professional development. So certainly looking for um, some good, you know, new ways that we can do that um, for the organization. Definitely want to also recognize that Bob Ray Bordelon, who has been our co-chair um, for a few years, is rotating off. So thank you, Bob Ray, for your wonderful service to the committee. You know, you're moving into other leadership roles, of course, with IASIS. Um, and then recognize Wei Yin, who is coming on as my co-chair for the coming year. Um, so is Wei Yin in the room? Where are you? There you are. Um, so thank you, Wei Yin. <laughs> so really excited to, to be working with you on, on this um, committee. And with that, I will take any questions and certainly as also, as always, a call for new volunteers um, to join the group as well. Great. All right, thanks everyone. Apparently my main job is to push the green button. And now it's time for our fellows conversation. Are you happy, Paula? Yeah. Okay. Do I press the green button here? Green button. All right. 
Hi everyone, I'm Florio Argilias. I'm the co-chair of the Fellows Committee. Uh, Sarah is my uh, co-chair, my other co-chair. Um, briefly, what we do at the ISIS Fellows Committee is that we provide uh, support uh, to data professionals from emerging economies and underrepresented regions, and also early career professionals to attend our uh, annual conference or um, regional workshops, uh, such as ISIS Africa workshops or meetings. Now, if you notice our budget uh, this year, uh, if you looked at, uh, if you observed uh, Jen's uh, uh, presentation, we have a budget of 1.8 million US cents. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of saying that, right? Um, so, uh, we selected six fellows. Uh, however, two of them couldn't join us in person uh, because of difficulties scheduling a US visa interview. So we deferred their fellowship to next year. Uh, hopefully they will be able to join us next year in dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> so let me introduce our uh, new fellows this year. So uh, Nike Olabe. Uh, she is from uh, the University of Lagos, Nigeria, senior librarian. Uh, so we have a representative from Africa. Uh, the next one is our representative, uh, our fellow from Europe, uh, Susanna Akeba Filola. Uh, she is from the Oriental Institute of the Czech <laughs> Academy of Sciences. Over there. Uh, so, our fellow from South America, uh, Noe Nessel, uh, from the Ministry of Education, uh, Argentina. And our fellow from Asia, uh, Wahida Zain. Uh, senior lecturer, University <laughs> Technology, Maya. So, uh, if you're interested in uh, joining the committee, you are very much welcome uh, to join us. Uh, so, just contact me or Sarah. Uh, these are the members uh, uh, currently of the committee. Uh, the three um, other members of that committee are actually uh, past fellows, uh, but they are. Uh, but the committee is open to everyone. Thank you. All right. Now, it does it. Don't press the red button, so I try not to. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm, they say I'm a man of many hats here, so you will hear me talk here for a while, so let me put my first hat on. And this is the uh, elections committee hat. We'll do this briefly. All of those who have followed ISIS the mailing list know already that this was an election year and elections were arranged uh, in each active geographic region using simply voting service as previously, and the election took place from March 30 to April 19 this year. And uh, to note, since we saw uh, membership numbers, the distribution of at-large seats remain unchanged as it corresponded to the membership distribution across regions. Uh, we always review that uh, before the uh, election, but. Uh, it has been fairly static uh, uh, over the years, I would say. And all members who have been elected need to be members in good standing. And also, if you were one voting for them, you also were a member in good standing, which is the requirement. San already uh, asked people in the administrative committee to stand up, so I'm not going to do that again. I'm just showing you here the... Uh, up for election, that's not the right title. Uh, that actually is a title uh, for the last year's presentation. Um, <laughs> probably we make a little arrangement later on and fix the term. But here we have our executive regional secretaries and members at large, so you should uh, always feel free to contact, for example, your own regional secretary if you feel, you know, feel that you have something to say about regional matters. That kind of concludes my 
uh, first thing. <laughs> Any questions before I select the next tab? Okay. Here we go. Communications. Uh, just to let you briefly know what the communications committee does, uh, plenty of it is website maintenance, iosysdata.org. Uh, that, that's the, like the main pain in the butt. Uh, then there's iosys.info, uh, our membership uh, site. We manage that a bit, uh, a bit less. So there are blogs, resources, uh, jobs repository, webinar information. So if there is an ISIS webinar, we link it obviously. Uh, from the website as well, even if it lives in YouTube. Uh, and over the uh, years we've done some, uh, over the year we have some, done some minor website development, try to, for example, see that accessibility issues would be better uh, monitored on the website. I have to mention that immediately uh, after the, our 2020 <coughs> conference, we had an interesting Raiders of the Lost website uh, accident. Uh, all of a sudden, ma messages to the list did not go through, so we figured, what the heck is wrong with our emailing list? Nothing was wrong. What was wrong that our domain had disappeared. Uh, it took us, I mean, a little time to figure this out, and the lessons, uh, lesson to learn, um, if you maintain a website, make sure that your ICANN information is up to date, so if they say they, they want to do a review, it is nice if it goes to an email address that has existed at least on this century, uh, <laughs> because the chances are that you read it are slightly better. So we, uh, one of the lessons learned, we are now uh, secure again and back in business, back online. Uh, one major thing uh, this year is that we host the conference website for the first time since 1999, which, by the way, is about the time when the email was updated. <laughs> uh, what else we do? Uh, we manage feedback uh, via our online feedback forum. Uh, there are a couple of emails every month, at least, seeing a slight increase there. And then there's... Uh, emailing list moderation and uh, also mod uh, moderating our uh, presence in social media. A few figures, uh, since this is a data group, uh, I, I try to sort of uh, look at the membership year, so at, at the moment we are still obviously missing uh, most May and June data. Uh, so about 75,000 uh, web views on isis.data.org, uh, in, uh, I mean, increase is considerable from last year, uh, and uh, people have also spent way more time on the website than they did before. Well, no wonder, we, because we actually host the conference website, and that draws even more uh, traffic than our website front page at the moment. Just slightly, but a bit more. And in addition, uh, jobs repository, main page, conference section, those are the mostly frequently visited area, areas there. All right, now you uh, heard what we have been able to do uh, with the resources we have. And uh, so there's a comms team. In addition, uh, should be in addition to the IQ team, there is the mailing list administrator, Ashley Jester, and then the website editor, uh, Zach Painter, who's not here. and. Uh, communications chair, that's me. Uh, and then we have social uh, media helpers and content providers, uh, and the latter is, I would say, the most important group because us as a group, we don't put any new information on the website. We need other people to actually think about stuff that needs to go up on the website. So remember to take advantage, for example, of our blog. Uh, you can be a content provider. There's an email address. If you send emails or blogs into the address, I will see them, I will publish them, or someone else will. Okay, questions? Can I put this hat somewhere here? Seems that way. Right, this is a totally new hat, the big one. I assist Achievement Award, and uh, this is so rare that I actually need my notes. 
So, uh, as you know, ISIS is about networking, sharing the expertise, volunteering. We share the results of our own achievements during and in between conferences. But every now and then there are individuals who have contributed to the organization and profession beyond all expectations, more than anyone, even themselves, knew years back. So to recognize us individuals, ISIS has established the ISIS Achievement Award. Now the uh, award committee consists of three immediate past presidents, so my, myself, Bill Block, and Melanie Bright. Uh, and the committee's decisions on uh, award recipients have to be unanimous. And the award is not given for a single significant accomplishment. It has to be for sustained contribution to the association and to the profession. This year, the committee has decided to award a long-time ISIS member and the editor of ISIS Quarterly, Karsten Boyer Rasmussen. And here we uh, see the award, and since you see Sand there, that means the Karsten unfortunately couldn't join us. Uh, Karsten works as an associate professor at the Department of Marketing and Management in University of Southern Denmark. And uh, since his first conference in 1978, he has given many talks on metadata, methods, data quality. He has participated in almost 30 conferences, chaired an action group on codebook documentation on social science data, which actually started something that for, uh, eventually became the first version of DDI. But above all, Karsten has been the IQ editor since spring 1997. He has steered the journal through, through layout changes, helped it become a fully-fledged open journal. But more importantly, I would say his enthusiasm has kept the journal current. Uh, he has been a strong advocate of encouraging everyone to turn their presentations into articles in the IQ. So take the hint. If you're presenting, you are an author already. And he has written a number of insightful, humorous editorials uh, for, for IQ. Today, he is stepping down, and I think it's not at all too much to say that he has been an essential part in building what ISIS is to get today. So as said, unfortunately, he can't join us. Uh, we will see that the award uh, makes its way to Denmark. Uh, but he sends his regards, and I quote his thank you note here very briefly. So during my work on metadata within ISIS, I have met a lot of nice, interesting, smart people that I came to regard as friends. I've kept, I've kept con connection to ISIS by becoming the editor of the ISIS quarterly. I will thank you, uh, I will thank two friends here, Walter Piovesan, who did layout and production, and Jane Roberts, who turned my Danglish into English for my editorials. I'm happy to quit now, especially because you ISisters will have a very competent replacement. The IQ will be in good hands. Besides this award, uh, IS, uh, Karsten will receive a lifetime membership of ISIST, and we hope to see him in a future conferences. Thank you on my part. I don't know, is, is it appropriate to say, are there any questions, or would it be more appropriate to say that's time for applause that are audible in Denmark? Yeah. With that, without asking Sun to come up here, I think we are ready for the IQ report. So for those of you who don't know, um, this is us. Um, Ophira Schwartz and I, Michelle Hazlett, 
are replacing, uh, we, not that we can replace Carson, but we trying are to trying to fill his big shoes. So um, here we are. Um, so there have been some other changes with the IQ over the past year. Um, Ophira and I have been already meeting with Karsten to document all of the, you know, experience and knowledge that he has mainly in his head. Um, and in the process of that, Ophira moved into sort of a, both of us moved into a proto-editorial role, um, at which point we needed a new managing editor. And so Philip Nolobu in Zimbabwe has taken on the role of managing editor. Well, Philip and I were both on the editorial board. And so those two positions have uh, been, now been vacated. Um, one of the things that we have been asking about at this conference is people who are interested in filling those roles. And we have a couple of volunteers already. Um, but there are a lot of opportunities for new features, new columns, new uh, special issues with the IQ. And so uh, I'm going to be at the Birds of a Feather session to talk with people who are interested in, in getting involved with the IQ. We, if you are new to this conference or a new member, please come talk to me. Um, we very much want to hear both if you're interested in working with us and your ideas for the journal. So uh, I have a notebook, I'm jotting stuff down and um, we're gonna share that out. The editorial board hasn't been very active. Um, we only established it recently because it was a requirement to be part of the directory of open access journals. And essentially we have gotten emails occasionally when Carson wanted input on something. Now Ophira and I are thinking that that might, could be a more active group and that we should meet at least once or twice a year and that you all can give us good information to feed back into the journal. To reiterate uh, Tomas' uh, original suggestion, if you are presenting at this conference, we are going to hound you about putting your paper into the IQ. Uh, so if you haven't thought about that already, please do. Oh, I have it in front of me. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, I, I okay, turned so, it. Yeah, so uh, I'll just uh, mention um, that uh, the next I, uh, issue of IQ will be published in June. This will be uh, uh, Karsten's last uh, issue as an editor. Uh, this will be followed by uh, a double special issue uh, from, uh, from uh, of paper from the Africa uh, Second Africa Workshop, planned for the end of 2023, uh, and we already have some submissions for the following uh, issue as well. But again, uh, please sub consider submitting your papers to um, IQ. And again, uh, please reach out to Michelle or myself uh, if you have any uh, ideas or suggestions for topics or features that you would like to see in IQ. Uh, we are happy to hear from you. And again, uh, we are looking forward to uh, hearing from you and to working with you. Thank you. ran away fast. You don't want any questions. <laughs> All right. One of the really important people at this year's conference is one of the folks who helped put the program together. So Kevin Manuel is going to tell you all about how this year went. Thank you, Sam. Just me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> one of our favorite topics here. Before I start this, I'd like to thank my um, uh, other uh, members of the program committee, uh, <clears throat> Anya and Jonathan, uh, who are not able to be here with us. Anya's been online supporting me virtually, and my poor Jonathan wasn't able to, uh, to join us. But we'll start with our favorite topic, statistics. Mm -hmm. So we had 
four days uh, of a hybrid conference. Mm. So we had um, uh, one day of in-person pre-conference workshops plus the three days of the conference. Mm. We had 110 submissions and we accepted 84% of those mm. and we had 32 reviewers and something new that was uh, an important addition to uh, the reviewing process was three diversity community members. So those proposals that had not been uh, accepted went through a, a second uh, of review with the diversity committee. Mm -hmm. We had 11 coordinators that volunteered to help all the different aspects of uh, the program and these included 59 presentations, nine panels, 15 posters, five lightning talks. Mm -hmm. Another new feature which was our fireside chat. I had really good feedback about that. I hope you really enjoyed uh, our speakers um, and uh, we hope to continue with that in, in the future. And <coughs> of course today, our uh, terrific keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, we had five workshops, um, <coughs> pre-conference, and of course, mm, what we wanna know, 256 attendees, 164 in person, and 92 virtual. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna thank all of our volunteers for the coordinator. I really wanna thank my local arrangements um, the local arrangements uh, committee for all of this um, work that they put into this is wonderful venue um, it's wonderful location and a big thank you to my program uh, committee members mm -hmm. okay so the theme of the conference was um, diversity uh, in research and social justice from data and we decided to do this because we were noticing the nature of our work has been changing because the type of questions that we are getting are really based in the awareness of social injustice. And we thought it was really appropriate, especially that the pandemic had amplified a lot of these uh, social justice issues. Mm -hmm. So um, we had 33 diversity related submissions and we placed these within eight dedicated diversity sessions. And there was a range of topics from accessibility anti-racism, equality, equity, and inclusivity, indigenous peoples, LGBTQ plus peoples, and women's rights. And we've had a lot of positive comments coming in uh, about the theme. And thank you, Berenica, for your comment here on, yep, thank you. <laughs> so some new features that I've mentioned uh, for 2023. So the fireside chat with our guest speakers, um, we continued with uh, networking activities for our interest groups, but uh, the regional group meetings was a new opportunity because a lot of us haven't seen each other in person in a while, so we thought that would be a great uh, opportunity for people to be able to get together. And our birds of a feather, of course, which is right after this, mm -hmm. but we added our new diversity committee with uh, three members in the review process. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had our posters, and included in that was our I Assist Africa Research uh, posters. Uh, our grant winners as well too, and um, we use OpenConf for our slide upload. So please remember to upload your uh, presentations. So uh, our committee has a few just recommendations going forward for next year and future conferences is to continue with the diversity session stream in future conferences and maintain the diversity review committee for any rejected uh, presentations just to make sure that you know there isn't anything that's been left out that might be important to discuss and of course most importantly consider volunteering as a program chair for 2024 it's a great experience mm -hmm. um, you get to see a lot of amazing submissions from around the world uh, and you learn a lot um, working with these so uh, thank you very much and uh, I'll take any questions now All right, I guess we did a good job, thank you. <laughs> All right, as we start to wrap up, interest groups. So those who are new to iAssist or may not um, have a lot of information about some of the other activities beyond the conference and whatnot, we do have interest groups. And interest groups are ways of folks who, of, of getting folks together who want to communicate and work on um, 
similar topics. And so we currently have uh, three interest groups that uh, have uh, the reports, detailed reports online. Interest groups are very easy to set up. If there's one that you would like to um, see an area that you're interested in, um, we can, it's, it's very easy for you to find other folks who want to do this. So um, in the interest of time, I'm, go I'm not gonna blow through all of this, but I am going to um, recognize that um, the detailed reports are available online, but I will ask the chairs of each of the current interest groups if there's anything that they would like to say. So we'll start with our newly renamed Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Data Resources Interest Group. So I just wanna say um, this work has been a long time coming. We started developing resources with our interest group two years ago and all of our projects are now linked on our page within the community portion of the ISS website. And I have to say, I could not be prouder of my group members for all of the work that they've put into these resources and the additional development that we're looking ahead to. So thank you so much to all of the people who participated in the interest group and who are moving that work forward. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I should point out that all of the interest groups are all open and actively happy to um, have new members join if you are so interested. Um, next, if I push the right green button, Quishdig, as everybody knows it's called. Sebastian? Hi, um, I'm none of these people. Uh, I'm Sebastian Karcher. Uh, six years ago, Linda and Mandy brought together a small group of people who worked on this weird thing called qualitative data that was very marginalized. Um, two years later, they handed over a very active interest group to my wonderful co-facilitator, Alicia Montgomery, and me. And now it's time to uh, hand over a very, very active group to four wonderful people. Cheryl is here, the other three are not. There's Cheryl. Um, <laughs> Kushtig has been incredibly active. The session yesterday was packed with people and more importantly, packed with ideas. We've done a lot of webinars. In fact, if you remember that 22,000 views on the YouTube channel, two thirds of those are for qualitative content. So really, ISS now is a qualitative data organization. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, that's all due to, uh, to Kushtake. And it's in wonderful hands going forward. Um, and come join. Okay, and our geospatial data and interest group, Amanda or Jenny, you want to say anything? Hi, I'm Jenny. Um, I'm one of the co-chairs of the geospatial interest group, along with Amanda, and so we just wanted to say um, in the upcoming year, we're gonna focus a lot on developing a repository of open educational resources around GIS, um, and so just look for information coming on the listserv about that. We don't have an, in, uh, an independent group email list or anything. Essentially, if you are a member of IASIS, you are a member of the Geospatial Interest Group. Um, so just look on the general list for that and definitely reach out to us. Our contact information is on the website. If you have any ideas about programming or anything you'd like, like to do with us. Anything? That's it, thanks. All right, and as we have talked about when we mentioned Africa and other things, we have regions and each of those regions has a regional secretary that writes a report. Those reports are online, but I do wanna give a second to shout out to people who do stand in those regional um, secretary positions. So because we're in Philly, we'll start with the United States. Everybody say hello to Stephanie Tully. She's our <laughs> US regional secretary. Um, our neighbors to the north, Canada, where is our Canadian Regional Secretary, Jane? Uh, Europe, where is our European Regional Secretary? At home, sorry, they're not here, so don't look for them. Um, remind me who it is? No, who's, who's our Regional Secretary for Europe? David Schiller, sorry, everybody applaud for David Schiller. 
Uh, Asia Pacific, we all know who that is. It's Sam. And then the Africa region not only has its own chapter, but also has a regional secretary, and that's Winnie Nikesa, who is I, hopefully online. Um, so everybody applaud for Winnie. And that is all we have to discuss today. I need a motion to adjourn. Paula moves to adjourn, and Ashley seconds it. All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstained? All right, thank you guys very much. Go to a Birds of the Feather session, enjoy the rest of today, and don't forget to have fun at the banquet tonight. Be there starting at 5.30, do not be later than 6.